What's up everybody, it's EZ doing my first ever guide in Clash Royale. I think what I'm going to do with these uh, Clash Royale videos is I'm going to just go over different decks that I like to use. I'm getting pretty good at certain decks and now that I'm actually good enough to win a match uh, out of 10, uh, I can start <laughs> making some Clash Royale content. Having a lot of fun. This is the funnest game I've ever played and actually wanted to kill someone at the same time. I don't know if you feel the same way, but it's it's amazing uh, your emotional roller coaster you go on in this game. Uh, anyway, let's get into the deck. It, this is a hog cycle deck, uh, and I'm going to explain everything to as if you've never played or, or just just started playing. So if you have a lot of experience, bear with me. Uh, so the hog cycle deck. The, the reason why we call it a cycle deck is because you're going to be cycling through to the hog and putting the hog rider in as often as possible. And this is a two lane deck. Uh, by two lanes, you see there's a left and the right um, bridge. And what what you try to do is you're going to try to put the hog rider. And you will use what we call a predictive or prediction lo uh, log right after. Uh, this deck has one legendary card in it. Um, now, I know that there's a lot of players out there that don't uh, won't use any gems or anything. So, it's, it may be hard to get the log. Um, th there are other troops you can use instead of the log. But, but it's hard to... The log is one of those cards that's kind of hard to replace. Anyway, uh, uh, you put the hog rider in. Put the log in right behind it and what the log will do is it will clear out any of the uh any of the big pack cards like the skeleton army or like the goblin horde so all those horde t cards that are so dangerous against the hog rider that um the log will take care of that <clears throat> meanwhile down the other lane you're going to have this uh these distraction troops or, th or this distraction rhythm of troops really and what you'll do is you'll start off with a defensive play and the defensive play will usually be putting the cannon in right there in the middle uh, remember one thing guys if there's one thing you want to remember especially starting out is avoid putting the troops in right there at the river i know that it's kind of hard when you first start out because you see the troops coming right down at you you want to put the troops right on top of theirs to stop them but you really want to put the troops in in between your two towers or maybe even in between uh, the, your 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 outer tower and the center tower, and what you'll find is is that the troops that are coming down the lane will actually veer off towards the middle, and that will give you some more time with your your tower shooting at the troops coming in on you. So instead of putting them in right on top of the other troops, uh, give you, let your towers do some work on these troops on the way in by putting the your troops in in the middle of in that middle area. That will really help you out a lot. And I know it takes a little patience to do it, uh, but it's, it's a big big thing to do. So the defense, you'll start off with the, the cannon. And as the troops are coming in for the cannon, then you'll put the ice wizard in. And uh, the ice wizard doesn't do a lot of damage. It's got some good hit points to it though, so it, it, he doesn't die real quick. But he slows everything down. And, uh, and he's, he's another good troop. Got, he does splash damage, so he's another good troop to use against uh, the horde cards. Like the skeleton army or like the uh, the minions, he, he, it may take him a couple shots, but he'll get those couple shots in and take him out. Uh, now, so just to quickly recap, you'll, you'll be in one lane, you'll be throwing the hog rider in. Now, you may want to build up your elixir and throw in like four cards at once. I like to do that. I'll, I'll use the hog rider. I mean, just so you know, I'm doing the opposite of what I'm saying in this replay here, which uh, often I get, see, because I get excited and I have to pile everything in at the river. <laughs> uh, so anyway, yeah, you'll throw the hog rider in, put the put the log in right behind it, and you see right there is a perfect example. The hog rider goes in. Uh, they they throw a skeleton army to stop them. The, the log takes out the entire skeleton army. Uh, often I'll use the bats in that combination, and the bats will come in and help uh, distract and take out other troops. And then I'll put the fireball in. And if you if you have the elixir to do the hog rider with the log, then the bats in the fireball. That is a very dangerous punch. A lot of times that will take a tower out all by itself. But just remember, if you're overpowering on offense and you end up with no elixir, that's when you can that's when they can counterattack you and it can be really, really dangerous. Fortunately, this deck has a lot of answers for a lot of different things. There's a lot of small uh, elixir cards in here, which is really good for the for the newer players. But now if you see in the replay right here, perfect example. They throw the skeleton army in to try to stop the hog rider, put the log in, it takes it takes all that out. Then I threw the fireball in on top. And now I, I believe it's down to like I can't really read it uh, on the screen, but it's down under a thousand already on that first strike. And now the, the ice wizard's playing defense and just patiently knocking all those troops back and, and slowing them down. And he's not in front; he's off to the side. So now the mini packet had to veer off to the left to go take care of the ice wizard, and that gave the the right hand tower all that time to help out. 
And so now this is the, what, what's going on on the screen is this is not even really the attack. This is just the distraction. And so while this is going on on your right side, you want to cycle through to the hog rider on the left side and send the hog rider down and send the log down with it. Even though uh, most of the time I'll probably do something different I'm explaining. <laughs> not really good at doing what I say yet. I don't know why. So... Again, here's the, here's a hog rider, and I, right now I'm frantically trying to put another troop in next to it. Do you guys do that too? Uh, uh, I don't know why um, I can click on something 50 times and it won't go if I don't have the elixir still. <laughs> uh, so, and now the defense, it's really important. This game is a defensive-minded game, even though you're attacking at all times, but you also have to think defense at all times. And one of the great combinations for defense is using the Ice Golem and the Mini P.E.K.K.A. You want to use those two cards together. Uh, and, and in most cases, the, uh, the troops will go for the Ice Golem, and that will give you a mini peck of time to run up to whatever troop it is and hit it once or twice. And in most troops, it only takes one or two hits to, t to take it out. Mini P.E.K.K.A. does a ton of damage, but it doesn't have a lot of hit points, so that's why you have to use it with the Ice Golem. And another great thing about the Ice Golem is uh, it, it has the ice effect, so when it dies, it kind of explodes, and uh, if it's surrounded by a, a skeleton horde or skeleton army, all the skeletons go down with it so it's got that nice little defensive feature with it too so that's why it's, an, it's another great choice to use with the mini pekka because the mini pekka has got a powerful punch and if a lot of people like to counter the mini pekka with a with a horde and if they do that then uh, once the mini pekka explodes there the, there goes the horde so now even though this is designed to uh, be a two lane type of a, uh, of uh, attack strategy once you get down to one uh once you get down to one lane uh you know you have to come up with a game plan at that point and you may want to take strikes at the main tower because i see a lot of people do that but no most of the time what i will do is i will try to play defense and instead of just trying to go all offense okay you've already got a tower down you've already got a tower uh advantage over them so don't expose yourself at that point yes still send cars down at their tower but at this point, concentrate and focus on defense a little more. And just really keep on trying to frustrate them. Every time they put something in, try to have an answer for it. Try to conserve and, and try to get up on uh, Elixir uh, while you're playing. And this is something that uh, it took me a long time to figure out. And so I'm, I'm going to start saying it now right at the beginning. Always keep your Elixir count in mind. And always think about your Elixir count compared to theirs. Because every single time that you can put in a card... Uh, if they put in a card that's worth six and you put in a card that's worth two and stop it You've just made a huge um, Advent made a huge advantage for yourself uh, Like right there. They put in uh, the three musketeers. That's a nine card. They went down with one fireball So I traded a nine card for a four card So at this point now I'm up four or five elixir on them and I've got an immediate advantage So what they're what they're gonna try to do is they're gonna try to uh, overrun me with a bunch of a bunch of troops they have yeah you see you've already seen that they have the three musketeers uh they're using the barbarian um camp i don't even know what the hell that's called so within uh, they just dropped the barbarians in so they're going to try to build up a bunch of different troops on me but there is a way to counter this the best way to counter this is to keep is keep sending them to the middle and keep forcing all those groups of troops into the middle that way all of your towers can help each other out and most of the time when they're using the the barbarians uh and they're using all the you know you, they'll have eight or ten barbarians on the board at one time uh try to get some air troops in on top of them the minion horde is probably the best answer for that but you know I, i'm using bats because bats is a nice two uh you know a little two answer which heads up bats don't beat minion a minion horde the minion horde will eat right through the bats like they're not even there but they will take out a barbarian horde super fast so real another really effective card kind of newer card the bats and again i i actually have a three musketeer deck and if you don't have a heal card with it then it's almost a waste because they're going to fireball you which is going to either kill you or take you down really really low and if you don't heal back up that's a nine card you're wasting so the person i'm playing right here king whoever they, they didn't have an answer for the fireball and they kept every time I just I, I was holding off on that fireball and you want to do that You want to hold on to cards once you figure out what they've got once they cycle through the, all of their cards And if they've used them all uh, it's kind of like uh, b being at the, on the 
on the at the poker table or being at the card table where you're kind of keeping an eye on what they're using what they're putting down and if you have a, a, a perfect counter for one of their cards only use that card for that specific purpose so uh, for the most part you see what I just did there uh, use the fireball he was waiting for me to use the fireball he drops the three musketeers the second I use the fireball and now I don't have an answer for the three musketeers uh, as far as the fireball answer now I still had other things I could cycle through to which was you know fine but it's always good to have that one card as an answer okay so one of the last features of this deck is gonna be the counter strike this is a very important part of every deck that you build is to have that counter strike kind of embedded in the deck and this has a great counter strike to it basically what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna continue to watch that elixir count and when you think you've got a great gain and maybe you're, you're full and they've just used everything and you've got a little advantage you'll send the hog rider you'll send the you'll send your normal hog rider cycle down that one lane and then you will send at the same time you will send the golem and the in the, in the mini packet down the other lane so then they'll have two different lanes to try to deal with at the same time and this can cause huge problems for anyone trying to play defense or trying to uh, trying to defend down both lanes they can make a mistake they, they they may pick the wrong lane to defend and that's when you can really start applying some pressures when you're sending things down both lanes at the same time so got a little guest star in this video this is nirvana this is a great attack i watched this and i wanted to add it to it this would be the last uh, the, the last attack in the video I'm gonna kind of try to keep these videos between uh, uh you know 10 and 10 and 12 minutes or something like that uh so anyway Nirvana, she's she is uh, the infamous Nirvana. She has been she's done videos with me. She's in our Clash of Clans clan uh, in my house. Um, it doesn't mean I have to put her in the videos, but I want to. <laughs> uh, so it's got a very unorthodox style of play. Uh, you'll see that in one attack. That's all you have to do is watch one attack, and you'll see that she's got a very unorthodox style of play. She's using two defensive buildings here, and I just want you to watch how she cycles through these uh, these defensive buildings. And how well she manages their troops by steadily keeping these defensive buildings at it in the core. And even under distress, she will still send her troops on, on attack at all times. Uh, so she'll never give up her attack. And that's how she overcomes a lot of this stuff. Now, a huge threat. Gollum and Valkyrie come at the same time. So now you can't put a horde uh, card on, on the Gollum because the Valkyrie take one spin and take them all out. So as as Gollum takes out the mortar, in comes the Tesla. Now the Gollum is still taking damage only from that right hand tower, but uh, well, I'm sorry, the right hand tower and the Tesla. So the Gollum gets beat up a little bit. Uh, at this point, now the Hog Rider and Gollum are both in there. So now you have a Hog Rider and a Gollum on one tower, and it was this certain doom. But she she puts in the the skeleton horse. She manages to uh, stay alive for just another minute there. Um, immediately goes right back to the defensive play by putting the mortar in. Mor the mortar is chipping away at every troop that's coming down the lane. She's pulling the troops into the middle, which is exactly what you want to do because now, now the middle tower and the right hand tower are both going to damage. Nirvana puts the skeleton horde right there on the golem. Now he's answering all these ho her skeleton horde with a tornado. Tornado wasn't doing a lot, but he's also got another uh, goblin horde as well. So what she does is she decides to, to take the action over to the left lane. And she puts the infernal dragon in the left lane, and you have to ha you have to uh, answer the infernal dragon. You cannot let the infernal dragon make it all the way to the tower, because he can take out a whole tower by himself really quick. So as soon as they respond with that, then she goes right back to using the miner. And I believe what he's doing for defense is he's using a rage spell on his tower, which actually worked really well. So now he's got another puts golem back in. Uh, and he he's dropping golem with the Valkyrie every time, so that's going to prevent most of the the horde cards from even working at all and so now luckily the the, the hog rider decided to go to the left tower and that, she just dodged a bullet right there because if that hog went to the right hand tower that would have probably cost for the match but the infernal dragon takes out the, the golem again hog rider is going down the center and i believe right now he's going to drop another golem i believe and but meanwhile she's got two defensive buildings still in there and, and that's been the key so far is they they can't get to that right tower because they they're going for the tesla first and they're going for the mortar and just constantly constantly keeping those two buildings in the middle and that's the, that's what i see a lot of people they'll, they'll go away from using those defensive buildings and they just they work so well so use the freeze spell freezes up the skeleton horde 
and now making making its way towards the tower knowing that that infernal drag is not going to really do anything uh puts the miner in miner takes the last couple shots well earned well earned win she gets a laugh out of him i don't know why so great match for nirvana hope you guys enjoy the video Gonna, well, I'm gonna. I have a couple other decks that I'm gonna be working on this weekend. Not sure exactly when the videos are gonna come out. Probably sometime later on, either the, this evening or tomorrow. So look forward to that. So appreciate everyone for watching. I'm gonna have more Clash of Clans videos coming out. I think I have one that's done. And I, I'm another one's half done. I got all these videos, video after video. I just love making them. So <laughs> look forward to that. Uh, sub to the channel, guys. I, I, we are putting out as much content as we possibly can and still try to have uh, quality content i know i'm in it so that kind of downgrades it right there but other than that they're not bad so sub to the channel come back and see me Till next time it's been easy take care everybody